Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London, and this afternoon I'm looking at a book from Routledge. It's part of the Law of Financial Crime series, and it's called Fighting Financial Crime in the Global Economic Crisis. And it's been edited by three people, Nicholas Ryder, Uma Turkson and Sabine Hassler. Uh, it's an excellent book. We've given it a title. Elizabeth and I had a talk about the book. We've given it a title, New from Routledge, Current, Choice and Erudite Commentary on Financial Crime. Let's look at the book first, because the book is actually quite an important one. There's the front of it. There's the spine. There's nothing on the back. It's got a little statement, the law of financial crime. You can just probably just see it. The book itself is a hardback. It runs to just over 200 pages. Um, there's a limited, smallish index, but very useful. The chapter headings, you see what you've got here. It's a lot of copious footnoting throughout, which is very useful. Um, and again, you've got quite a large amount. There's a nice conclusion at the end of most of the chapters as well, which is very helpful. And as I say, you have a useful, uh, a useful index. Now at the front, it sets out who's actually been responsible for this. This is the um, front page there. That sets out what's actually in this book. It's effectively a, a really partly a forward, if you like. Then there's a couple of other books in the series. It's growing at the moment. This is the front page there. Then we've got um, an introduction. There is actually a forward, which has been written by uh, Rosalind Wright, uh, Queen's Council. There are 10 chapters in total and an index. That's the second page of the index. And there, this is the note on the contributors. I can't go through all of them. But they're very, um, very important people in their own right. Done a huge amount of work on this. And you can see the names there. Then you've got a forward, as I say, which is quite useful. Um, this is looking specifically at the, f from the, f um, the immediate past chairman of the Fraud Advisory Panel. So you've got some fairly heavy guns here. And then the introduction from... Um, Professor Ryder and the other two authors setting out what the book is all about. And as I say, you can see running through it, uh, deterrence, for instance, there and so on. It's an important book because of what has been happening to the world with this latest downturn. This is what we say anyway. One wonders from time to time where we in the United Kingdom would be without our financial services industry. It's the backbone of our economy and the question of whether any of us could survive without it was especially prevalent in 2007. That was the year which saw the emergence on both sides of the Atlantic of the worst financial crisis since the Wall Street crash of 1929. There was scarcely a financial institution that wasn't affected, but survive we did. Whether we have satisfactorily recovered or not is another matter. Millions of words and a veritable library of books have been written about these and related matters. This new book from Routledge, which we welcome, um, which explores the link between the global economic crisis and the financial and financial crime itself, must surely be one of the best on the market. I certainly think it is. Should be read by all bankers, certainly in my view. The book is edited by Nicholas Ryder, Uma Turkson, and Sabine Hassler, all from the University of the West of England, and it presents the contributions of 15 experts in this burgeoning field of study. One of them is Jonathan Fisher, Queen's Counsel, who's a practicing barrister, leading silk, and visiting professor at the LSE. His specialist area, white collar crime, financial regulation, and tax avoidance cases, um, puts him in a very good position to comment on all of this. He's also the general editor of Lloyd's Law Reports and Financial Crime, as well as a Chartered Tax Advisor and Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Taxation. His article for the book is entitled Risk, Recklessness and Policing Financial Markets and discusses the inevitable tension between calculated risk-taking and reckless risk-taking. Now, we all know we have an idea in law about what the word reckless means, and it's used in a particular way here. Knowing, of course, when there's a difference in the possible penalties that could or should result for making the wrong decision is, of course, the key to the issue. The commentary is quite compelling, including, for example, the remarks on city traders 
and JP Morgan and the London and Whale. So read the book if you want to know more, and I'll leave it at that. But first, read the editor's introduction, which gives, by way of reminder, a review of the financial crisis we've been through, centering on what happened and why. Subsequent chapters deal with issues such as LIBOR and money laundering. Indeed, chapter six will be of direct interest to solicitors as it deals with the anti-money laundering framework, reporting suspicions, applying for consent and tipping off. Now, I know many people, and I'm just diverting here, will know about money laundering because it's absolutely fundamental for us as practitioners to know about it. The question I have, it doesn't seem to be getting at the right people. It's getting at blanket coverage, but a lot of people are escaping at the moment. And this is really why this book, I think, is very helpful, because it is the fight against what is effect, effectively global problems we have in, in financial crime. The final chapter, having got that off my chest, the final chapter offers much comment on virtual currencies such as Britcoin, the need to regulate them and also the need for the regulation of cyberspace. There'll be more on, certainly on cyberspace, whether Britcoin is going to take off dramatically as they think is another matter, but certainly cyberspace is the, is the thing of the future and I'm sure Routledge are, are cognizant of that and will be producing more titles in due course. The last chapter looks at enforcement mechanisms in both the US and the UK from disqualification of directors to custodial sentences and a range of other measures. Let's be quite clear, it's white collar crime but there are victims. There's always a comment saying there's no victim. Well there are it's countries and it's, it's actually quite a lot of people too, investors, all sorts of other people. So don't be, a, don't be put off by the fact that people say there's no victim. There always is a victim. Whatever your interest, therefore, in financial crime, this book subjects it in all its facets to a concerned and determined scrutiny. It's clear, succinct, thought-provoking and at times appropriately fierce in its condemnation of this increasingly commonplace form of criminal activity, which has affected not only the developed world, but emerging economies as well. And we know, we know which com countries we're talking about, and we know the appalling abuses that have taken place. But at some stage, there will have to be some global cohesion and coherence about how we deal with this particular problem. Let me conclude by saying that Anyone involved in the financial services industry wishing to keep abreast of current and innovative thinking in this vital area should acquire this timely and important book. And the publication date is 2015. I think it is very important to bear in mind what is actually in the book because we've been through this. We're probably going to have another one of these crises, certainly in my lifetime, and therefore we've got to know what's going on. Just opening the book anywhere. This is an article by Peter Cartwright, and it's dealing with uh, credible deterrence and consumer protection. Very important. Again, you see the footnotes there. It's very, very relevant to today's society, and I'm sure the, the younger generation that is coming up, the postgraduate student just getting into into the workplace will find this very interesting. Uh, money laundering is dealt with there as well and as I say there is the index at the back which is well worth looking at just to show you and at the front just again do read as I said the foreword by um, Rosalind Wright which is there. Thank you anyway to the three authors and to Routledge for what is a first class book Delighted to have it uh, to review and thank you for the huge amount of work that's gone into it. It's something that will be with us now for a long period of time and I think it's, an, it's a very useful um, commentary on where we are at the moment and where we're going. So thank you to all concerned. Bye bye.